Bill Livingston, columnist, Cleveland Plain Dealer. His uh, most recent column, Dear Cavalier Fans, I told you so. Bill joins us now. What's the local reaction there in Cleveland, Bill? Well, pretty, you know, it's uh, it's excited, but it's not delirious because the Cavs have uh, have now won the lottery a number of times, including the last two years, and they didn't get anything last year with Anthony Bennett. That was a swing and a miss. Now, he may be some kind of a player in the future, but four points and three rebounds, or maybe it was three and four, but, you know, <laughs> who cares? Uh, you know, uh, one year at UNLV, a Canadian who might should consider icing the puck. And, you know, Kyrie Irving has been a, you know, he's, he's won the MVP in the All-Star game. Well, what does that mean? You know, the team has not, the team was not put together well. There were duplicate parts with him and Deion Waiters. Uh, they're not a defensive team. They had a defensive coach in Mike Brown who couldn't motivate them. It's been a mess here. So, you know, yeah, they, they have a number one pick in a much better draft this year than last year. But there's not a, you know, there's not a LeBron James out there. There's, there are, are, the, uh, are Anthony Davis, uh, who, who really has improved, uh, you know, uh, his NBA team uh, after he had that one year at Kentucky. So it's hopeful, but... It's this is a football town. The real excitement's about Johnny Football being here. Really? More, yeah. Uh, well, I understand the excitement level, but I, I just with uh, you got to get a coach in there for the Cavaliers, and I right. and now. Well, they have a they have an offensive GM now, a guy who believe, you know came out of the Phoenix Sun system, and uh, you know you just couldn't play Mike Brown seventy six to seventy two games anymore. The the rules men encourage a lot more scoring now. I never was not a big fan of Mike coming back the second time. I will say, yeah. I I never understood that that you bring in a guy to play defense, but you don't play defense. I mean, right. that's what he's known for. And you got some right. offensive weapons, but you say, damn it, we're going to play defense. And then right. you have one of the worst defenses in the NBA. Well, that, that, goes, back to the, that goes back to the owner, too, who grew up uh, and went to Michigan State and grew up uh, as a Pistons fan. And, you know, the Pistons were, were a great power in the middle of the last decade. They won it in 2004 without a superstar with a defensive orientation. But I don't know whether those days uh, really apply anymore. There, there's the occasional, you know, uh, eighty seventy five game in the playoffs. But usually, it's up there around a hundred points now. I mean, there are all the rule changes were were to benefit the offense, and um, you, you got you got to score more points. That's just the way it is. And it was just a bad hire. You know, Dan Gilbert said a lot of them. Do you think uh, that people actually believe that LeBron James could come back to Cleveland? Well, there are people who are going to think that now that they could get Andrew Wiggin or maybe trade for Love, whatever they do with the number one pick. I've I have never really understood it, Dan. Um, I am uh, of the score settler and grudge holder persuasion, <laughs> and this guy rubbed our noses in it, you know, and and uh, was duplicitous, would not return phone calls. They were trying to get Tom Izzo to be the coach. Uh, he was interested because he and Gilbert have the Michigan State ties, and, and Gilbert's up there a lot as a big donor and, and a butt booster. And uh, he wouldn't return phone calls. He didn't play very well in his last series. Um, you know, I, there's no question he colluded with the other two, but it can't be proven legally. And the Cavaliers thought that there was tampering, but they were dissuaded by the NBA for, from pursuing that. Hmm. So I don't, I, you know, I don't think he would. They may win their third straight championship this year. They just got home court back. San Antonio is going to take a lot of beating, but, but you know, San Antonio may not get there, but I think they will. Uh, the reaction to Manziel, how surprising? Well, I can't. I don't get that either because the 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 Brian Hoyer loyalist. That's that's just a Cleveland thing. I mean, he's a. He's a St. Ignatius High School, one of the great powers here in, in Ohio, and he went to Michigan State, not the Michigan State team that won the Big Ten championship against Ohio State or anything, just a you know middle of the pack Big Ten team, and he's been a career backup, and and you know he held the clipboard or maybe he sent in the plays uh, in New England and learned from Belichick and all that, but he has 18 appearances, he had two in a partial game. Uh, you know, his career quarterback rating is 68.4, which is mediocre. That's, you know, even Colt McCoy was 72 or 3. Derek Anderson was, I think, around that area. You know, it's just mediocre. He really hasn't had that much of a chance, but I don't understand 
why this, there's something so sacrosanct about this guy. They said, <laughs> and I think it's proper that they said Manziel's not going to be the starter. You can't, you know, that, that would be a play into the entitlement. But, you know, I suspect he'll start, maybe not game one, but certainly by game three or four. Tell me about this owner, because it, it just, there's bizarre stuff that seems to come out of his mouth. Or Yeah. I, I, I don't understand. We got a couple of bizarre owners. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's why Gilbert's been laying so low. I mean, it's it's like where's where's Dano? Like where's Waldo lately? <laughs> You're talking about Jimmy Haslam, though, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know he's uh, he's still in a heap of trouble, Dan, with the Feds. I mean, you know, a lot of guys have been have moved on at at Pilot Flying J. It is difficult. I'm just going to say this: it is difficult for me to believe a man who pitched himself so wholeheartedly into the Browns and then had to had to back off because if the feds had locked down his office and were, were confiscating files, uh, and who's been so hands-on here, who fired Petten after one year despite a wave of injuries to the quarterbacks, and who fired the people he brought in to run the franchise, Banner and Lombardi, who is so incredibly involved and hand on, hands-on here would know absolutely nothing about the gas rebate scam. It's just... But, you know, micromanagers frequently don't know anything about crimes that have been committed, or at least they they avow that they don't. Do you think he's going to prison? No, I think he'll probably lawyer up and and, and, and the, want him to retain the franchise. Or yeah. He's already said, he, he says it in a very legalese way. He says it will continue to be an asset to our family, which means that possibly his father, could, his 80-year-old father, could be running the team while uh, Dan... <laughs> While Jimmy serves some sort of uh, time in the penalty box. Uh, which owner is better for his team? Haslam or Gilbert? Uh, boy, that's a tough call. Uh, right now, Gilbert's made so many mistakes, and so has Haslam. I think the NFL gives you a better chance to win uh, than, than any other sport. You know, teams come... Teams just go up on the elevator. You know, Arizona, I never thought Arizona would be in a Super Bowl before the Cleveland Browns, and they almost won it. Uh, they're, they're just teams that come out of the weeds and go, and, you know, New Orleans has won a Super Bowl. Well, they've got a really good quarterback and all, but nobody thought the Saints would ever win a Super Bowl. Uh, it, they, give you a, they give you a good chance, and the Browns have pro bowlers on the field. Uh, I thought I thought Manziel was very good talking about why he came here. The defense was ranked eighth or ninth in the league last year. Yeah. They had six Pro Bowlers. Now they lost Josh Gordon. That's a big loss at receiver, and they did not take Sammy Watkins. I suspect because he too has a pot problem in his past. But there are pieces here. The offensive line's pretty good. Um, you know, they they they. I, I do agree that they were playing better. They were better than their record, but they just had so many injuries. I, I didn't like firing Petten after one year. I mean, firing uh, Chudzinski after one year. Yeah. I might have said Petten before, too. I meant Chudzinski. Yeah, I, I like the Manziel pick, and now it went from if you drafted. Especially at 22. Yes, but now yeah. all of a sudden it's it's a great pick because you got him at 22. If you got him at four, he might have been overrated. At 22, right. suddenly he's underrated. I, I, I do a lot of Ohio State and sit watch a lot of college football, and he just – I think he's terrific. I thought he was a terrific college player. I, I saw him make plays. I didn't see anybody else in college football, any other quarterback make in the toughest league in college football that there is, and probably the toughest league except for the NFL on the planet. I think they're a playoff team, Billy. Well, it wouldn't flabbergast me. It really wouldn't. Um, and is there I think, any chance? I think he's going to be good, you know, but there's there's a lot of doubters about him. And, and he's come in and he's struck all the right notes. He. He, uh, you know, he said all the proper things. And I just think, you know, I'm going to practice today. I don't know what you're going to see because it's all going to be routine stuff. And you want to see Johnny Manziel on a, on a broken play. That's his genius, you know. We're not going to see that much. But he had a great pro day. So, you know, apparently the, all the technical <laughs> problems are, are certainly being resolved. Uh, Josh Gordon, any chance he plays this year? I don't see it. I don't see it. I mean, and the fact that they picked up Miles Austin and other guys, yeah. I think they know it too. Yeah. Well, have fun today. Thanks, All Bill. All right. Thanks, Dan, and uh, thanks for having me on. All right. Bill Livingston, Cleveland Plain Dealer columnist.